In 1975, the race carried a new title, the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Diamond Stakes, and total prize money of over £120,000. For many, it was the racing highlight of the year. For some, the racing highlight of all time. The main contenders in the race were the English and Irish Derby winner Grundy from Peter Warwin's stable, the winner of the two previous runnings, Dahlia, and Grandier's closest rival in the betting, Bastino. Of the remainder, Star Appeal, Ashmore, and On My Way presented the strongest challenge. No one who saw this race will ever forget it. And that away. And Bustino himself is one of the first to show from Grundy on the outside. And then the highest racing up now to take it up from Kinglet. And it's highest from Kinglet and Bustino, the three stable companions, with Star Appeal on the outside of Bustino. Then comes Grundy. Then just in behind Grundy is Ashmore. And then Dibbydale. And then comes Dahlia. Then on my way and Card King. Seven furlongs to run now in the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Diamond Stakes. And it's highest in the lead from Kinglet. And then comes Star Appeal. And then Bustino. Behind Bustino is Grundy. Then Ashmore. Then Dahlia. Then Card King. And then Dibbydale. Then Levers Ribbon on my way is the back marker of the 11 runners and now it's Kinglet who's going on Kinglet from highest and then star appeal and then Bustino Bustino making relentless progress back in fifth place is Grundy but closing with them and then comes Ashmore and then Dahlia and it's Kinglet from star appeal now as they race towards the five furlong marker and pass it it's Kinglet in the lead from star appeal in second and Bustino third and Grundy four and five Ashmore and six is Dahlia seven just behind them Libra's rip making good ground towards the outside then card king behind card king is Dividale then on my way and they're past the half mile marker now and racing towards the home turn and it's Bustino has gone on from Grundy and it's Bustino now in the lead from Grundy the favourite in second then comes Star Appeal third, Dahlia's coming there strongly four, behind Dahlia is Ashmore then Libra's Ribbon, Card King as they level up for home and Bustino from Grundy in second, Star Appeal and Dahlia then Ashmore then on my way beginning a run towards the stand side of the two final marker and it's Bustino, Joe Mercer being pressed by Pat Henry now Grundy then Dahlia in third place as they race towards the Berlin Bowl. It's Bustino and Grundy together. Then comes Dahlia, then on my way. Bustino on the far side, Grundy on the near side. The three-year-old and the four-year-old. They race into the final 150 yards. And it's Grundy going on from Bustino and Dahlia and on my way. Bustino's fighting his way back, but Grundy's holding him on as they come to the line. Grundy wins it. Bustino second, Dahlia third. No one was to know then that the race had ended the careers of both Grundy and Bastino. The official time was just under two and a half seconds faster than any previously recorded for the King George. Grundy's Italian owner, Dr. Carlo Vittadini, would see his horse run only once more, in which he finished a tired fourth. Bastino never ran again. Peter Walwyn ended the season as leading trainer, breaking records for both money won and races won. Pat Edery was leading jockey just four years after winning the Apprentice Championship. And they're off away for the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Kipco Stakes, unable, drawn wide, wide in the early stages as they begin their run downhill towards Swinley Bottom. Norway is ridden forward in the purple jacket ahead of stable companion Magic Wand. Anthony Van Dyke, the other Aidan O'Brien runner, another of the Aidan O'Brien runners just slotting in on the inside, going forward to his hunting horn. Enable endeavouring to get in here, Frankie de Tory. He's still caught towards the outside side just behind Crystal Ocean in the dark blue with the yellow cap red jacketed Valgeist the gray on the inside is Defoe followed by the Japanese challenger Cheval Grand and at the back Mirando and Saluen who has been a front runner is held up at the back of the field it's Norway that leads the field by a couple of lengths to Magic Wand in third is Hunting Horn Aidan O'Brien runners one two and three Anthony Van Dyke then on the inside of Crystal Ocean followed back in the field by 
Cheval guys. Defoe, a neighbor has only got three behind her. Uh, they are Cheval Grand along with Salouen and Mirando as they emerge out of Swinley Bottom and now racing inside the final six, just passing the six furlong on marker. And Norway is serving up a strong gallop, followed by Magic Wand in second place. On the outside in the pink colors is Hunting Horn. Anthony Van Dyke then the inside of Crystal Ocean. Enable is still well back behind Valgeist, followed by Defoe, Cheval Grand, and then Salouen and Mirando is being ridden along to Little Aval at the back of the field. Heading on towards the four furlong marker, they are well strung out. It's looked a punishing pace being set by Norway, who will surely come back to them in the straight. In second, Magic Wand, Hunting Horn, then Crystal Ocean in fourth, Valgeist, and then after Valgeist on the outside is Enable beginning to pick up one or two scalps as they run into the home straight and Norway drifting off the inside. It's closed down by Crystal Ocean and Nabel making rapid progress down the outside. Crystal Ocean goes on, but Nabel is quick to challenge. Then Hunting Horn and Valgeist and Nabel on the outside of Crystal Ocean and these two are kicking away from Valgeist in third, racing on towards the final furlong and what a battle between them and Nabel near side. Crystal Ocean will not edged out second, Valkyrie's third, Salouen running on possibly to take fourth ahead of Hunting Horn. Enables the Queen. She beats Crystal Ocean in a thrilling finish. What a filly, what a result, and what a ride, Freddie. Absolutely, what a filly. I mean, unbelievable. She's getting better and better. Nothing can actually, you know, beat her. Um, change of plan you know in tactics wise Frankie had to take his time from that white draw he couldn't really get in so he had to take a pull on her he was four wide ended up being three wide then and um, look it was up, up against her here from that draw but she's delivered she has got the will of a champion that's what makes a superstar racehorse she was in a battle with Crystal Ocean and she would not let him pass absolutely she's got the right attitude about it it was a ding-dong battle for over two furlongs just the two of them the two best horses in the race and um, yeah unbelievable what and a finish two of the best horses in the world as well and look at that you can see the drive there on the inside on crystal ocean james Doyle desperate to win this again but frankie wasn't having any of it and in chris in enable he had the most willing of partners absolutely he actually only gave her a few taps in behind and the rest was hands and heels because he always felt like he was going to hold off crystal ocean and uh, what a performance now this filly is absolutely special. Now, I know that I'm definitely too young to rem remember this, so you certainly are, but memories of Grundy against Bastino in the race of the century in the 1975 King George here at Ascot, and this will go down in history. This will certainly go down in history, absolutely. I mean, what a finish this was. Look at these two. Look, James Doyle, Frank Dettori, all guns blazing, going for it, and... Uh, yeah, this is exactly what you wanted to see for a King George. Yeah, if you're tuning in here and you wanted to see a superstar performance, then that is it. Look at those lovely big ears. They're just pricking as Frankie eases up on her. What a man he is as well. 4.30.